the first song on the list I wanted to wanted you to talk about was um, "Billy Jean" by Michael Jackson. Um, yeah. When when was the first time you heard it, and um, did was this was it on TV as well with the dancing and and, and all that stuff, um, or was or was it just the record? Well, to kind of sum up before we go into detail, to kind of sum up the reason why I did this list, how I did it, um, it's it's obviously quite um, sparse in the sense that there's all kinds of genres and and obviously languages. And I, and I did it uh, I did it on purpose like that because that's kind of how I've been brought up. I think a lot of it has to do with my upbringing, with culture, with um, where I was born, you know, where I moved to and, and sort of the evolution and, and how I became who I became because I was influenced by all these different genres. Um, so I, I think a lot of it is always going to come down to that, like, you know, um, Billy Jean, you know, kind of to answer your, your specific question, you know, obviously Michael, I almost picked, I almost did this list um, thinking of the artist first and then the song. Um, sometimes it's easier that way because, you know, these are artists who, who obviously influenced me quite a bit. Michael, it, you know, defined or changed pop music forever. Um, just everything, the, you know, it, not only the songs, um, but also just the visual, you know, the, the shows, the, the choreographies, uh, the videos. Um, and uh, Billie Jean, um, you know, this, this, this album Thriller, I think Off the Wall Thriller, um, Dangerous, those were albums that came out right when I was growing up. You know, I was a little kid wanting to do music and obviously, you know, I, I would see his videos and his shows and it's just like, wow, you know, this, this, this guy just singing his butt off and dancing and the arrangements were just incredible. The musicians who played on every track, you know, he had Eddie Van Halen do guitar solos, you know, he had uh, Steve yeah. Lukather do guitar solos, you know, um, just the, ses the session musicians on, on these tracks were the best of the cool. best, you know, the brass arrangements on on that whole album you know thriller was it was just ridiculous you know quincy jones is uh, it's, it's a monster so yeah i mean I've, I've always been a fan of music and even when i was a little kid you know i was i was always sort of thinking a little more and digging deeper into the song not just you know this guy who's very famous michael jackson i was always really into the arrangement side of it and, and just everything that went along with the music so you know, obviously I was highly influenced. Um, you know, I grew up in, I was born and I grew up in Puerto Rico. So, so Latin music obviously has, has played a huge role. That's why it was really important for me to, to pick a couple of Spanish songs, you know, in, in my list. Um, but obviously in Puerto Rico, being part of the United States, we also heard everything that was being played, you know, in the, in the United States as well. So I was always just a little bit in the middle, you know, I would listen to some salsa music and some you know, some rock music or pop music, whatever, you know, what it was, whatever was being played on radio. Yeah, I mean, well, it, it shows in, in your, your own music because you've, you've made such a variety of records from, you know, ballads to like more pop-based stuff. And, and obviously yeah. a lot of it has, has that kind of, you know, Latin influence. Um, so I'd, I'd love for you to take me through the, the kind of Spanish songs on the, on the list now. Yeah, so for example, um, I don't have the list in front of me, but one that, that's, you know, that's really obvious is um, Juan Luis Guerra, um, a song called Bachata Rosa. The, the problem with Juan Luis is that it's tough to find one song because I'm, I'm such a big fan. Um, you know, he's, uh, he's from the Dominican Republic. He, um, I associate Juan Luis with, with a specific time in my life um, around, you know, 1989, 1990 which is the time that I moved from Puerto Rico to the U.S., which was, um, it was a crucial time, you know, because it was obviously, I was, I was very young and, you know, I had to leave every, you know, everything behind because my dad got a new job. So we had to move to Orlando. Um, and, and it would, you know, that move was tough, obviously, you know, new language, sort of leaving my family, not my family, but my cousins and stuff. You know, I grew up, you know, I grew up very close to them, um, my school, so Juan Luis, that's when Juan Luis was just, you know, that album was, was uh, which I, if I'm not mistaken, the album was also called Bachata Rosa. Um, 
was just all over the place. And that's what we just heard at home. You know, that's my dad had that, that uh, video, that VHS, cause you know, back then. Um, and he would just play that. And I remember that first Christmas, um, I, I want to say it was 1990. Um, it was the first Christmas away from home, you know, away from, uh, from, from Puerto Rico. And it was kind of nostalgic, you know, I was, I was very young. So I, I, now that I think about it, I, I, I realized that it was nostalgic. Back then it was just different, you know, it was just weird. Um, but Juan Luis was sort of the soundtrack to that, to that era, you know? So he, um, my, my little brother and my little sister and I would um, imitate that DVD because, you know, um, he had, Juan Luis had Cuatro Cuarenta, which was the band and he would have background singers next to him and doing sort of choreography and singing. Um, and, and we would have, we, you know, we would imitate Juan Luis, you know, during, during our Christmas parties and stuff. So he's been a huge influence, especially now, you know, he's still to this day, my favorite artist as a songwriter, you know, Berkeley graduate, just a musician, you know, from top to bottom. Um, and, uh, it, it's cool. I actually got, you know, I consider him my friend. I've, I've been able to collaborate with him, um, in various occasions. So, so it, it's really cool how it circle back from being my childhood sort of um, hero to now being able to, to work with him and, and to call my friends. Well, yeah, that's, that's so amazing. It must feel so, so great. Yeah, absolutely. And, and what, what about um, Frank, Frankie Ruiz? Frankie Ruiz, that was a different era. I wasn't, you know, when he was, when he was really famous, um, I was super young. So, I know Frankie Ruiz because of my dad, you know, it's, it's old school salsa. Um, but it's my all time favorite salsa voice, you know, and I got to, um, I got hooked on, on Frankie Ruiz later, later in life, you know, um, because the salsa that I love is sort of the classic, you know, the classic salsa It's, it's sort of like if, if we were going to say, you know, the rock that I like is the classic rock from the eighties. Well, this is, you know, Frankie from, from the eighties. Um, back then, to be honest, you know, I was probably listening to Michael Jackson and, and, and you know, and, and, and more the what kids were more into. But obviously, this old school salsa music would always be playing in my house, in, in, in the car. And, and now it's like, I love it. You know what I mean? It's like I go back and, and trying to figure out who, who the best voice was in the old school salsa days. And Frankie is just amazing. And and the track you chose was Mi Libertad. Yeah. Uh, and it's a powerful track. He wrote it when he was in jail. Um, so he's he's Mi Libertad means my my sort of my freedom, you know? Yeah. So he's he's talking about being free and kind of uh, how how much he misses um being able to hang out with his friends and and and, and go to the, you know, you know, in his neighborhood and just hang out with, you know, with his family and friends and and but he's you know stuck between four walls and and you know in this small cell. So he wrote the song there, and, and it's just kind of a it's a it's a powerful song. Yeah, that's that's a, an amazing story. And and yeah. Luis Miguel. Luis Miguel is you know he's our he's probably the 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 best. I mean, obviously this is my point of view, right? But the, the best Latin uh, voice ever, <laughs> and, uh, you know, when it comes to sort of a balladeer kind of voice, he's, um, he, Luis Miguel is, is, is it, you know, he, he influenced me big time, um, you know, his, his biggest hits came, you know, in the 90s, um, so I was already living in the U.S., so he, he's the guy that I would always show my, my friends in Orlando, my non-Spanish speaking friends, I was like, just listen to this guy's voice, I know you don't understand him, but just check him out. He's just, uh, you know, the best singer. Uh, so he's, uh, he's, you know, he's just got that powerful, um, soulful voice. And, and he was just somebody who I would try to sort of emulate, you know, when I was, when I became a young singer and I was in, 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 in high school, you know, auditioning for whatever, um, you know, I would try to sing his songs and, 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 and he absolutely became a huge, you know, inspiration. So, Probably my, my favorite vocalist of all time in any language. Wow. 
that's uh, and that, that's quite an accolade because some of some of the names you uh, you've you've got um on your favorite records so some pretty serious singers um and it's it's interesting that you chose boys to men uh, on bended knee because um i mean there are a couple of ballads on this list but you you began your career um kind of more focused on ballads right yeah that and and then you know obviously you you could still you could still do that stuff very well but what what kind of made you want to change change it up and and vary it up um as as you went along i mean i think still to this day um when i think of like songs that will stay with me um forever for some reason i i i connect a little bit more to ballads um maybe because they're a little bit more heartfelt yeah um because they're a little bit more timeless um i'm not saying they're better because i i love you know i love rock i love hip hop i love um you know i i love salsa obviously but but ballads are just the ones that they just hit you harder you know what i mean and 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 sometimes you associate them with with a specific time and for some reason i i i just connect to them more and and especially when i was younger again trying to be a singer um the ballads they obviously give you a little bit more space to sing you know to show off your voice whereas yeah. the the up tempos it's more about the vibe and and the rhythm the ballads are the ones you want to sing like you know you want to sing the heck out of them so you know i would always i would always lean towards that you know if you notice a lot a lot of the songs in my list and a lot of the artists who i really admire are singers you know are 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 um our actual vocalist who who you know I always connect to songs who have strong singers you know that's why I'm a big fan of Voice to Man Brian McKnight uh Steve Perry uh, Luis Miguel these are these are voices that um even Frankie just has such a powerful voice so me being a voice major I studied voice you know th- this that's my main instrument um that's the first thing I listen to you know a lot of people when they turn on a song some people connect to the rhythm some people connect to the lyrics some people connect to you know just different things i connect first to the voice and then you know to the, to the to the other factors and and you chose um i mean the journey track that you chose is is i mean i guess it's it's a, a bit more than a ballad faithfully but yeah. i guess it's pretty much a, a ballad and uh, you know you, you mentioned steve perry so a, a journey one of your favorite like rock bands Yeah, huge Journey fan, huge Journey fan. Love Steve Perry. Um, you know, they those songs, you know, that mix of 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 ballad and and rock. There's just huge power ballads and and those soaring vocals. Um, you know, really well-written songs. Um yeah. and and again, I just I I I picked faith same thing with with Boys to Men because we kind of skipped over it. I just kind of picked the song because I'm a huge Boys to Men fan um and and I put on Bend the Knee but it could have been End of the Road it could have been you know what I mean like it could have been any of these beautiful water runs dry um even their version of yesterday you know that they did a cappella I used to sing in an a cappella group when I was in in high school um my my three best friends and I and I and, and they're still to this day my my best friends um we met ninth grade chorus class and um our teacher would always kind of um point uh, sort of point us out from from our section you know I was tenor 1 Joey was tenor 2 Eric was baritone Joel was bass and he would always kind of say okay you guys sing this song and we were the ones that would have to show the class kind of how the song went when we were you know doing sight reading because we excelled a little bit more than the rest of the class so little by little because of this teacher we kind of started singing together a lot of these chorus songs and we made them our own we sort of made them sound a little bit more r&bish because of voice to men because this was right when voice to men was just all over radio you know so so that was a huge influence on, on us that's when my taste in music shifted a little bit more to the r&b world that's when i started really getting into you know Brian McKnight um obviously boys to man you know all that that whole r&b scene um 
and 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 that was that was really really big and and again another cool story you know i got to meet the guys from from boys to men and work with them i'm actually doing working on a song with Juan Ye right now as we speak wow. um who was my i don't want to say he was my favorite but he would I, I would always do his part you know because i'm tenor one so all the high notes i had to do so so i studied the heck out of Juan Ye, you know um of course i can't come even come close to the stuff that he does but um but it was it was cool it was cool to and now it's very cool to for him to actually reach out to me and say, Hey man, I want you to work on one of my songs. Um, so that's pretty cool. Um, and then, yeah, journey, you know, again, journey, when journey was, was really big, I was, I was too young to really understand. Um, so I became a fan a little later and it was one of those things that like, once you really get to understand it and you hear it, you're like, Oh man, I heard this song so many times, you know, going to school or, or just, you know, growing up. And now I realize how amazing Steve Perry was. Um, I never got to see him live, um, but I've, I've seen I've seen the band play uh, probably like five or six times with different lead singers, with the Australian dude I forgot his name, then with another rocker guy that I also forgot his name, then with um, Arnel Pinedas, who's the um, Filipino singer who who's the lead singer now, who sounds just like Steve Perry, and he's just. He's amazing. I mean, it, it's like listening to the record again. It's really cool. Yeah, I'd love to. I'd, yeah, I'd love to see them live. And 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 so the the Brian McKnight song, um, you know, I guess that 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 probably would have been been a more logical follow up to 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 Boys to Men. Yeah. Uh, so so was that you know that stuff was quite close. Was that one of the kind of like last influences before you started launching your own career? Yeah, Brian McKnight came. I remember, I remember, like it was yesterday. It's kind of a something that doesn't really happen anymore, which is sad. Um, I had a when I was in college. I went to Florida State University. I was studying music, and I had um between my theory class and whatever the next class was, I had like an hour. I always had like an hour and a half break, and um, I would always ride my bike to this record store. That was really cool. It was really close to the music building. And, you know, back, back in the day when, you know, we used to buy CDs, they used to have like the little listening stations, you know, with the headphones. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> so I would always go there and just check out, you know, what was, what was new, you know, um, this is pre, you know, pre uh, social media and, and music platforms. So, and I remember there's, there's this one um, album, I think it's called Remember the Time. And, um, and, and I heard it. I heard like three songs and I'm like, man, this guy's vocals are just insane. And, um, and that's when I really got hooked on, on Boyz II Men. I already knew about, you know, his older stuff, but once I heard that record, I, you know, kind of went back and, and did a little bit more research. And One Last Cry was always one of my favorite ones, you know? Um, funny story, when I got signed to Universal Music, you know, I recorded two songs one in Spanish and one in English as, as a demo, you know, to sort of present, you know, to have a, a presentation, you know, it's like, obviously I wanted to get signed. They needed to hear me. So I'm like, oh, what do I do? What song do I sing? So I went to a karaoke store to get tracks. Um, Cause of, you know, I, I didn't, I didn't know like a producer or anybody that create a song for me. So I literally bought a, a karaoke um, cassette, one in Spanish and one in English. And what I did was I did one of the songs that's there um, in my list, Hasta Que Me Olvides, from Luis Miguel, um, I recorded that, and I recorded One Last Cry. So I did one in English and one in Spanish. Those were my two demos, you know, that I had to present to a record label. So um, ima imagine how much they influenced me, you know, for me to go out there and, and try, to, try to do their, their song. Yeah, that's, that's a huge, and that's such a great story as well. Yeah. Um, and and so um, and then and then you you put Bob Marley. I mean, is 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 reggae? You know, is that that that's so different to to uh, some of the other things on that on this list? Yeah. Is is he? He's presumably the biggest kind of reg reggae influence on on your sound. I mean, when you think of reggae, you think of Bob Marley. I mean, I don't I don't think there's an artist that sort of represents a genre so strongly, you know, yeah, sure. as as um as Bob Marley and. And he was huge and he was huge in in puerto rico like i the, that album legend to me is probably one of the 
you know, if, if, if the question was what, you know, top five albums of all time, I would put, you know, Thriller. I would put Legend from Bob Marley. Every song was a single. Every song was a hit. And um, I remember when I was a kid, this was kind of way back. I don't remember what year, but it, it had to be like mid-80s, I would like to think. Um, you know, that, that's, that album got played so much in Puerto Rico. You know, I, I come from a tropical island. Reggae is is sort of... It's heard, you know, it's in the, you know, you hear when you go to the beach, you hear when you're on out on a boat, you know, it's just, it's, it just takes you to that island vibe, you know. Um, so still to this day, you know, when I jump on my boat, you know, and, and it's like you put a little Bob Marley. So you, it's like, that's when you really know you're, you're on the boat. You know what I mean? That's when you know you're, you're about to get tropical, you know. So it's, just, it, it's, it's an album that will never get old. And it's a sound that you know again that will never get old yeah it's it is that they're just timeless records aren't they and yep. uh, and then so i mean again you know i guess steve stevie wonder would have been um kind of good in a way to follow on from michael because he was obviously a fellow motown um but i love the song overjoyed that, you, that you've that you've chosen you know i guess not not necessarily the most obvious one but right uh, that's it's such a great, great song. Um, and I heard, heard him play it live. Why did you choose that one? Um, many reasons, you know, a lot, uh, around 10 years ago, I got asked to, to perform at a, at a huge Motown event. Um, you know, and uh, I was the only Latin artist there. It was just um, amazing artist from, from the US, you know, Rihanna was there, Beyonce was there, Maroon 5, um, Mariah, just the best of the best. And, and I got, I was, I was really the only Spanish speaking um, Latin artist there, which was already an honor, obviously. And um, they asked me to, to pick a song, a Motown song that, you know, that influenced me. So I was like, I'm going, I'm going for Stevie. And, and, and to me, Overjoyed, it's just, it's such a, it's such an awesome written song, you know, all the changes. Um, and, and that's what Stevie was. Stevie was super advanced in the way that he wrote, but somehow it wasn't complicated to hear it. You know, sometimes when you, when you, I, I call it overwriting, when you, when you get too smart with the, with, with the writing, the you sort of, um, what's that? With the chords, you know, some of it. Yeah, yeah. When there's a lot of, you know, yeah, yeah. when the melody's a little bit all over the place and then you have a lot of these chord changes and, and key changes and stuff and, and it's really cool because it's really impressive, but, but for a lot of people, it can become sort of overwhelming, you know, but Stevie just did it right. Cause he it was just really musical and really tasteful and, and, and that's hard to do. Um, and, and Overjoyed has a bunch of changes, but man, what a song. And when he performs it, it's just, it's incredible. Yeah. It, yeah, it, it really is. And, uh, and so, I, I want to want to talk about your your most recent music, but the, but before I do, um, the the final song on your list is I, I can't make you love me by Bonnie Ray, oh. um, which I guess is actually you know quite quite different from from the other stuff. Um, yeah. Tell tell me about Bonnie Ray and what, why you chose that track. That's probably the that's probably the the only track in in the list that came. Uh, song first instead of artist first you know um i don't i don't know many I don't, kind of embarrassed to say but i don't know a lot of other bonnie Raitt songs you know but this is this to me is just one of the most beautiful songs ever written period i've heard you know i don't know like six or seven different versions of this song and 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 i love them all but there's nothing like the original bonnie Raitt song it's just when you talk about just heartfelt, you know, it's, it's, it's all heart, you know, it's all emotion. It's all, yeah. I don't know. It's just one of those songs that I still hear. And it's like, you feel the pain, you know what I mean? Like you, you, you feel it. I've, I've had the chance to sing it a few times just for different events and stuff. When they asked me to sing a cover, I'm like, oh, okay, let's do it. Um, it's just beautifully written. And um, that's it, man. It's just, I don't, I don't even really know how or when, I just kind of connect to it, connected to it, but it just, it's always on top of my playlist when I just want to hear, you know, those songs. So, I mean, I could honestly say probably out of the, this list, this could be probably 
one of my one of my all time favorites. Wow, yeah, I mean it is it is a beautiful song. I think Bonnie Raitt. I I reckon you'd you'd like some of her her, her other songs as well. Um, yeah, I'm she, sure. I mean, I mean, I'm sure I know some stuff. You know what I mean? But it's like the other artists, like Michael, Luis Miguel, Juan Luis Guerra, Journey, um, Stevie. These are artists who I've studied up and down. Who I have every single record. Who I've seen a lot of them live. You know what I mean? I'm I, who I'm I like. I'm just a diehard fan of, and who have absolutely influenced the heck out of me. Bonnie Raitt. I, I I mean, I know she's had massive hits and stuff like that, but. I can't say that I've been to one of her shows or anything like that. This song just kind of popped up at one point and it was like, that's a freaking beautiful song, you know? And it's like, after, after I heard it once, I was like, I need to learn it in the piano. I need to learn the guitar. I need to sing it. You know, it's, 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 it's one of those. Yeah. Yeah. It really is a beautiful song. So um, I really appreciate you um, taking me through this list. It's been awesome to hear you talk about your favorite artists um, and, I just wanted to ask you about your latest single, um, The World Can Wait, um, and collaborating with Oakenfold on that. Um, that, that, must have, that must have been awesome. Um, what's, what's the song about? So, I, I think one of the most beautiful things about music, especially now, that music is more um, universal and more accessible and... Um, you know, I've, I've been able to to do and to work with artists from different parts of the world, complete different genres. You know what I mean? Um, and and to me, that was that was so important to not just get stuck as the Latin artist, especially when you know when when three years ago I released um, Despacito, which which really was the song that sort of um, catapulted me to you know, worldwide to different countries where, where they obviously don't speak Spanish. Um, when you have such a massive hit, they just remember you by that song, which I'm completely yeah. proud of and, 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 and I'm grateful for, but, but, you know, I love to be able to do all kinds of different things, you know, and, and sometimes it's tough to sort of get out of that niche. You know what I mean? Cause people, they just, they corner you in there and that's, they just want to hear you do those, those songs, which is fine. It's cool. But, uh, but I'm a singer and I love to sometimes just grab a guitar and, and, and just, and just sing, you know what I mean? And, and yeah. I love to, and I love to also do work with a DJ or work with a classic musician, or, you know, voice that, that I've loved or, or sing in Portuguese, you know, Sertanejo or, you know, like I, I, I love to, to go out of my comfort zone and, and just, and, and, and do great music. So going back to your question, um, you know, when, when Paul asked me to, to, to be a part of this track, which was a while back, actually it just came out now, but I want to say that was like two years ago when, when he sent me the first version, um, you know, I was really excited about it because it's, it's a really cool song. It's a really beautiful melody. It's a great message. Um, and, and I think he released it, you know, with everything that's going on right now. Yeah. It, it seems was, like it was, appropriate title. Yeah. 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 It just kind of. When, when I got that, when I got that call saying, oh, you know, the, the track is, is going to come out now. I was like, you know what? That's great, man. That's awesome. Um, really, you know, really enjoy what he does. Just such a, such a, a great guy. So I'm, you know, I'm honored to be a part of it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, it's a great, it's a great record. And, and, and uh, you know, obviously with, with Despacito being, you know, the most viewed um youtube video of all time and you know one of the biggest selling singles of all time it's good to hear that you, you know you want to keep it versatile because you've done so much in your career um that people should check out and, but at the same time you know do, it seems like you you kind of accept that you've got that kind of that smash you know like we interviewed bonnie tyler earlier today and she's got total eclipse of the heart that like everybody you know or like total yeah. africa or, you not know, a bad song. <laughs> there are these, there are these songs that are just so big. Total, gonna... Total was gonna be on my list, man. Total was like, if it was eleven tracks, probably Total would have been next. Oh well, you um, either, either <laughs> Rosanna or Hold oh. the Line or Africa. Those, those three are whew, big time. They are, they are amazing songs. Well, Lewis, thank you so much for taking the time to to talk to me. I, I loved hearing about it, and uh, yeah, thanks, thanks so much. I'm not gonna make yeah, you. Man your next interview. 
Um, All good, bro. Appreciate so it. Have a good rest of your, your day. Yeah, you too. Thank you so much. Take care.